Hello, welcome back. Uh, in this third video, which is the last video before we actually start programming and building the bot, I'm going to explain the teaching logic. Um, the teaching logic explanation is necessary because that will help you understand the reason why I have designed the app the way it has been designed. So <clears throat> this app has been designed to teach strategic sourcing. And in strategic sourcing, the first thing I do is give students this outline which tells them the way they are supposed to interact with the bot. Now, I'm not giving students specific questions. I'm just giving students some pointers or prompts, which I expect the students to convert into questions according to their own requirement. And uh, what I've given here is a certain minimum. The students can always expand this certain minimum um, and um, ask the questions at any level of depth and detail the, um, that they want to ask. So after getting the details um, or reading the details that are given, they go to this website which is provided and they can start interacting with uh, CPO or Chief Purchasing Officer Smith. Now a few things here. Um, usually I expect the students to have their own API keys and uh, that is why you see on this app this section which you see is where the students are expected to enter their own API keys and um, interact with the chatbot. As far as this demonstration is concerned, I have hard coded the API keys inside the program so that even when um, you or um, whoever is experimenting with this does not enter the API key, it will still work. So you have a choice whether you want to hard code the API keys and so the students can start working on this without um, having their own API keys or wanting the students to have their own API keys. And just a note, that these API keys are not very expensive, but more on that a little later. So the student can go on this particular website and start interacting uh, and say, um, tell me how procurement has changed over the last few decades. Now what is happening? I'll press the send key. So remember what is happening. We have created a background that the person who's responding has to respond as if um, he is the CPO of an automobile company, chief purchasing officer. He has some inputs, some experience and some more stuff which I should share at a later time. But then it, this packet of information, the user question plus the context goes to OpenAI and OpenAI has responded by saying that procurement has undergone a significant shift, blah, blah, blah. And um, it explains all the shift that procurement has gone through. Uh, and then I can ask one more question. I'm going to demonstrate one more aspect. Tell me about three key challenges for your role. And I send this message. So again, the same thing. It goes with the context, the previous message and the new question. So the entire thing is sent and we get a response. These are the three challenges. Challenge one is disruption. Challenge two is supplier relationships. And challenge three is cost management. Now, just to show you that there is a memory aspect where the previous con um, are, are remembered, the previous conversation is remembered. I'm not going to ask it saying, tell me more about the third challenge. Now, we know the third challenge is cost management, and but we're not going to tell ChatGPT explicitly that. We are hoping and testing if ChatGPT or um, whatever this program, the OpenAI chat program uh, remembers this. Tell me more about the third challenge. And so this, when I press send, so what is now happening is I made a, t a spelling error. I think that should not make too much of a difference. So now this entire thing goes back to the open AI and third challenge cost management. It remembers it. So the student interacts with the bot, goes and takes a quiz to ensure learning. If there's a quiz question which the student does not understand, the student can come back here and chat more go back, take the quizzes again. And in the end, when the student is satisfied with the level of interaction, the student can download the chat, which um, becomes the chat becomes in the form <coughs> of a word file, which is an interview. The student says, tell me how procurement has changed over the last few years. And then um, the CPO replies that this is, this is, this is the exact, uh, tell me about three key challenges. Tell me more about the third chance. This is the exact conversation we had, which is being reproduced here. So now this downloaded format can be used as some form of notes uh, by the student to study for the exams or any kind of future engagement.
One thing I want to highlight here is something that I've heard often, which says that, uh, which talks about data privacy and some ethical concerns. Now, an important thing to note here is that chat GPT or open AI specifically does not use any data that we input through an API for its training purposes. So whatever the data we input into API. So for example, I'm, I'm talking about CPO where I say my interaction with the CPO. Now, since the access is through API, none of the data is stored and used by chat or open AI to further answer questions. So my interaction does not form a basis. So the idea here is submitting anything through to chat GPT is, there are no privacy concerns here and it is similar to submitting an assignment to turnitin.com because the same thing happens. It goes to turnitin.com, turnitin applies its logic, checks for plagiarism and then sub gives the answer back to us. So what happens here is pretty similar. And if we don't have ethical concerns by submitting material to turn it in, we should not have ethical concerns for submitting material to um, an open AI based bot or any application, which is accessed through an API.